Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, church. This is for a couple more seconds. Let's just lift up his name this morning. God, we praise you, Lord. We lift up your name, God. There is no one greater, no one stronger. And we worship you this morning. We thank you, Jesus.
come in this house today. Oh, 
Lord. When they were in the upper room on that day, do you think they were just clapping their hands and saying, okay, God, this is it. We're just going to we're gonna come in here for a few minutes and we're just going to do our thing and leave. No, they needed it. They wanted to get a hold of something. They had to get a hold of God that day. For the Holy Ghost to fall, when it came in like a mighty rushing wind, they were desperate for His presence. They had been without Him for a few days. They had been without Him and they were desperate for something to move, to shift in the atmosphere. And today we need to take that same attitude. God, I need you more today than I did yesterday. I've got to have your presence. I've got to have a move of the Holy Ghost in my life and in my family. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, God wants to do something for you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, today can be your day. You need a move of God in your life. Just reach out to Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We need you today, Lord. God, we need you today.
Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Hallelujah Come on, we gotta get to that place where he's all we want and all we're after. Hallelujah. Nothing else will do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Nothing else will do. Praise God. There has to be that determination, that understanding that commitment, that dedication, hallelujah, that all I want is Jesus, hallelujah. The old saints used to sing a song, he used to sing, take this whole world but give me Jesus, praise God. After all, there's nothing else that's as important as him. I've got to know him. Paul says, oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. But then he went back a little further. In the fellowship of his suffering. Praise God. There's something about when everything isn't just going just right. When everything isn't just cheerful and, and great. But you're just in the lone times of Jesus. The most powerful time in Jesus' life. Was when he gave it all. Praise God. And that's what Paul was saying. If, if I can just join him in the fellowship of his suffering. When he was paying that ultimate price. I want to know him in that power. It's not fun. It's not fun when you've reached that point where you just need God. And you're desperately crying out to him. God I need you. I need you. I feel so far away. Song said. Years ago. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, I'm running back to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Running back to you. My forgive me sounds so empty. Hallelujah. I take advantage of your grace, but I'm running back to you. Hallelujah. There's something about that. When that heart is so desperate, like the prodigal son, he, brought, he, he went to his father's house, but the father met him. And fell on his neck. God just wants to give us that image. Sometimes we get the wrong image. We think, God, I've messed up. I've failed you. I've done this. I've done that. And God's saying, I am waiting for your return. And you're not going to make it to me. I'm going to come running to you. Praise God. The Bible says it's not as well that any should perish. But he's all about our salvation. So he'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. There's a role and there's a part that we have to play. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, tonight, this morning, rather, we want to go to God in prayer. If you'll just let those prayer requests that we have up there that have been submitted scroll. If there's anybody else, if you slip a hand up, if you have a prayer request here today, praise God. Let's go to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. God, I pray that you would touch Brother Armando and his family, Lord God, as they're sick this morning. I pray that you'd raise them up, Lord, from their bed of affliction, God. Have your way. God, I pray that you would meet all these needs here today, God. We come before you thankful, Lord. Lift up your mighty name, Lord. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you, God. You're deserving of our praise, God. You're deserving, Lord God, of our thanksgiving, God. Thank you for all the things that you've done, Lord. Thank you for our history, Lord God, and you of mighty acts and wonderful things that you've done in our lives, God. Have your way this morning, God. Touch, Lord, these bodies that need healing, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. God, of chronic diseases, Lord, I pray, Lord, for Brother Vanderhoff, Lord. Pastor Lay, Lord, God, I pray that you would touch, Lord, the different ones, Lord, that have cancer, Lord. Have your way in these bodies. You're more than powerful, Lord, God. You're able, Lord, to heal cancer. You're able to wipe it out, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. 
Touch Ollie's body, Lord. Let healing continue to take place there, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would move, Lord. Have your way. Show yourself mighty, God. Let us see miracles, God. Let us see miracles unfold in this house, Lord. In the name of Jesus, have your way this morning. Have your way this morning, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everyone. You can be seated. Going to go over the announcements. I'm going to start at the start of the end of June with June 29th. Saturday, there's a hyphen outing. It will involve coffee, so involve, uh, see Brother Stephen. Uh, and it's going to start at 10 a.m. So see Brother Stephen for details. Um, let's not forget that Tuesdays are our fast days. We want to make sure that um, you participate as best you can in the fast days on Tuesdays. Um, Monday night is uh, all church prayer. Did I get that right? I did not get that right. Okay. It's prayer for the people that count. Ladies' prayer. <laughs> Ladies' prayer is Monday night. I thought I had that. Um, June 7th and 8th is Help Me Heal Conference. See Sister Johnson for details of that. June 9th is Ice Cream Sunday. As she may not remember, but I remember. <laughs> I remember ice cream. <laughs> June 20th through the 22nd is Men's Conference. We'd like all the men to attend if can. Um, and June 23rd is Hyphen Luncheon. So keep all those dates in mind. If you need any reminders, you can see me after church, and I'll be glad to, uh, to go over them with you again. But, so I like a church that is active and involved in doing things. We appreciate all that the, the church is doing. Amen. We want to participate as much as we can Amen. in the kingdom of God and things that further his kingdom. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I feel faith today. You guys feel faith? Yeah. I feel faith in the house today. I feel like something can break loose and something can happen. One way we can display our faith is in giving. And I pray today that, that God is blessing us and continuing to uh, bless our homes, our finances, our families, our health. Um, today we're going to give in the offering. I pray that you have brought uh, something to the storehouse. And uh, if you can, we have three ways to give. Uh, you can give through the Cash App. That's dollar sign Great CPC. You can also give on our website. That is greatcommissionpc.org. There's a donate tab at the bottom. Also check that website out. It's, it's improving. And uh, thank Brother EJ for all the work he's doing on that website. And um, so you can give on our website and donate there. And then there's a traditional way. You give it our baskets that we have uh, before you today. If we could, let's pray before we give. God, we come before you with our offering today, God. We bring it in faith, stepping out, knowing that you're going to bless and multiply so that the work can be done in this city. God, we pray that you would begin to work in our homes and our families and in our health because of our giving, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for all that you are doing in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Smile at your neighbor, greet them, and say, glad to have you with us this morning as you give.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You be seated. <laughs> I just wanted to briefly go over again the um, the help me heal, and I talked about this a little bit last week, but I forgot to say that they do want you to register. I guess if you plan on attending, so they'll know how many is going to be in attendance. But the registration is free. They just want you to register, the, the, I guess, so they can have an attendance record. Um, like I said, it starts this Thursday at 7 o'clock, which will be Brother Hogan will be preaching. And then um, Friday morning, there's four sessions. And then Friday night, there's a session. And then Saturday at 9.30, there's a session. And I will. I was supposed to put this on the group meeting, and I completely forgot about it. If you are interested in going, please let me know today because I guess they want a head count and um, of everything that's going on. And they they had asked me Monday while we were at the picnic how many people I thought were coming, and I told her I'd get back with her. Well, we were at the picnic and I forgot, so I need to get back with her. Huh? Where's it going to be at? It is at. Um, Praise the Pentecost Church, um, just down the street, not too far from here, Brother Alfred, on Southgate. On Southgate. Okay, and um, if you have any questions, like I said, I'll put all of that on the group meet. I will put that on there today. And ladies, if you still wanted to go to Ladies Conference, the deadline for that, for the pre-registration, is July the 11th. And the, June the 11th, sorry. It's June the 11th, and everybody who pre-registers, they say we'll get a gift once you get there can't pre-register it's okay to pay later or pay at the door but if you want to pre-register you have to do that by June the 11th yes so the church is located at 11th street and 11th avenue rather and Southgate it's on the corner of those two streets and uh We'll get you the exact address, but it's on the corner of those two. It's like in a residential neighborhood at the at the back of it. Uh, that's where Eleventh Street kind of intersects with Southgate. Eleventh Avenue. Eleventh Avenue. Eleventh Avenue. Yeah. So praise God. That's going to be something to be at. Um, and it's going to be a great thing where the inner inner um, vention of counseling. And some things that are talked about there. I think everybody at some point needs to um, to have some alternate means of dealing with issues. You know, praise God. We have God, that's for sure. But when your brothers and sisters have uh, endeavored to learn some things, to study and to understand some things about the way we all kind of work, I think it can be very beneficial. I'd rather go to somebody that's in, you know, serving the same God, the God that I serve. And is a uh, light, precious faith yes. that um, that is endeavored to do those studies and get some and expose my mind and my my problems to praise God if at all possible. And this is a great thing. So let's let's uh, let's um, let's govern ourselves accordingly, and hopefully, some of you can make it to that. I think it'll be a great thing for you. Praise God. We're going to dismiss Sunday school off to my left hand side. And uh, we have a baptism today. We have two getting baptized. And so, praise God. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are Heather's children, and we're excited about this. A few, they'd asked me to be baptized a couple years ago. At least a year and a half ago or something to that effect. Maybe a little bit longer. But, praise God. Here we are. Here we are. We are at the place that they're going to be baptized today. And we're going to see God move in this family, in this life, in these lives. Praise God. God is a good God, and you never know what He's doing. But we always have to be in a place we're ready to do. Because we are the hands and the feet and the instruments that God will use to reach our world. Praise God. Let's stand today. Um, glad to have you all in the house of God this morning. It's nothing like being in the house of God. Amen. It's nothing like the people of God, nothing like the house of God, nothing like the presence of God. Because that's where it all culminates. That's where it all kind of comes down to what we want to be, where we want to be, in the presence of, of God, where He makes the difference. If you'll turn to your Bibles this morning to Matthew, the 11th chapter. I just want to read one verse this morning, but it is a powerful verse. And 
Uh, we're just going to pray that God speaks to us through what's being said here this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Matthew 11 and verse number 12. I don't know if they have it for the screen up there. But here we are. It says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. So everybody say, suffereth. suffereth. And the violent take it by force. Praise God. Let's put our Bibles down and let's talk to God for a moment. Father, we do love you. We do thank you. We, appre we appreciate the privilege, Lord, that is not lost on us, Lord, of being in your presence where you said there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, we used to declare that there's pleasure forevermore. God, I pray today, Lord, that we'll be about your business, Lord, and see that your work is done, Lord. There's so much to do. In our world, God, I pray that you would have your way. Equip us, Lord. Speak to us. Challenge us, Lord. Direct us, Lord. Have your way in this place today. In Jesus' name. Let's give God a hand clap as we're being seated. And I want to preach to you this morning from this thought. The power to change your future is in your faith. Praise God. The power to change your future is in your faith. John punched through the air, disturbing the status quo. Everyone was used to living in. Because he couldn't remain quiet. His voice was not confined to the few. But everyone in his orbit. Great and small. Had their deceitful. Desperately wicked heart challenged. To change by the truth he preached. Praise God. God is looking for somebody. With a trust. With a belief in him. Praise God. That will, will refuse to stay silent. But punch through the darkness proclaiming the truth that is the word of God. We're his hands. We're his feet. We're his voice. Praise God. Proclaiming his great truth. And declaring his infinite power in the earth. We're his representatives. If God's truth is going to be declared, it's only going to come through your mouth. Praise God. At least in this this age, praise God. God's only going to use a man. He's only going to talk through you and me. Praise God. Yes. And so the question is, will we be that person? Will we make ourselves, will we avail ourselves to God? Praise God. The Bible says of men born of woman, John the Baptist is the greatest. But in the kingdom of heaven, he's the least. You see, John was born with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. That's what the Bible says. He was born with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Wow. But in the kingdom of heaven, he was a transitional figure. He had a big role to play. But in the kingdom of heaven, he died before Jesus as he actually died and resurrected. Right. And so when we're baptized, we're enjoined with that death of Christ. Praise God. Now it counts for the ones that were before, all the ones that gave animal sacrifices, all the way up to John the Baptist, all of them, they see, and even the thief on the cross, all of them benefited from what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. But they never joined in that death. They never had an opportunity. Come on, come on. We have the opportunity. Amen. The Bible says, No, you're not, in Romans 6 and 3. So many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. Yes. Praise God. You can only be baptized into his death after he died. But what he says about John the Baptist is that John the Baptist was the spirit of Elijah. Mm -hmm. He says, if you're accepted. Mm -hmm. But he was of the spirit of Elijah come to preach and proclaim truth. And what was it about Elijah's proclaiming of truth? It's one thing. is when Elijah allowed God to put him in the jeopardous position. Of speaking to the king about the sin. And really the proclamation of what God was going to do. It will not rain for a space of three and a half years. And then challenging the gods of Baal. And the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. That boldness that was in Elijah to speak and to declare what thus saith the Lord. Praise God. And God is looking for somebody that will have that same that same desire that will take the initiative. This is what John the Baptist did. He took the initiative. He could have stayed quiet on some things. Right, right. But it didn't matter if they were great or small, powerful or unpowerful. Yeah. John the Baptist proclaimed the truth. Yeah. The Bible says that he picked on Herod. He talked about Herod having his 
brother's wife and said, it's not right. Even though Herod was not a Jew. Herod was set over the Jews by the Roman authority. But at the same time, in that position, he still was challenged by John. In so much that that was the undoing of John. That was the thing that made John lose his head. Praise God. But God's looking for somebody that trusts in Him, right. that believes in Him, right. that wants to see. Right. You see, John never did any miracles. John's role wasn't to do miracles. John's role was to turn the hearts of people towards God. Right. You see, a lot of times in the Old Testament, and God still dealt with the heart in the Old Testament. He, he talks about it. But really, you could fit up under by checking all those boxes. All the do's and don'ts of the law. And if you check those boxes, you could be okay. But God wanted to start dealing with the hearts of man. Getting more specific. Not just allowing you to hide behind some action, some work, or some activity. But God really wanted to get down to the heart, to the nitty gritty of the matter. And he wanted to have the change come at the heart level. And so John's role was to really start dealing with the heart of the matter. All the hypocrisy and all of the things that had taken place as people fulfilled the law. And even the, the, the chief people that fulfilled the law, the Pharisees, the Bible says that they came to get baptized of John, and John said, Oh, vipers! Who's warned you of the wrath to come? Go and do works that are meet or suitable of repentance. Show that you've repented before you come here to get baptized with what he was saying to them. Because John the Baptist was dealing with the heart. Yes. Praise God. His baptism was a baptism of repentance. Yeah. As Paul later let us know. That when he baptized somebody, it was how you repented. Yeah. It wasn't just a matter of... You see, God never ever accepted people just saying, I'm sorry, or I repent. Right. Yeah. Right. As the do away with your sins. Right. God never accepted that. Even at the very beginning... With Adam and Eve, when they made that blunder, an animal had to die. Right, right. That first death, and then everything in succession from there. We find in Leviticus 3, or 11 and 17, the Bible says, The life of all flesh is in the blood. Amen. And I have given you, he kind of lets us know, that I've given you the blood upon the altar. It's the blood that makes atonement for sins. Blood makes atonement. If there is a lesson to be learned, a principle to be established, something for us to put down on paper and understand that this is the foundational crux of the matter, as it were, is the fact that the blood, the shedding of blood, or the passing of a life, you see, blood is representative of life, and that he said that life of all flesh is in the blood. So when the blood is let, or when it runs, or when it flows, or when it's shed, that means death. It's another way of saying it. So blood's a representation of life. But he says that when that body, that death that takes place, that something has to die in order for there to be the payment for sin. Praise God. John the Baptist, of course, preached baptism of repentance, but he dealt with the hearts of men. He dealt with the actions that were on the outside. Yeah. He was getting people conditioned and ready to face Christ. Because Jesus came looking right straight through you. You couldn't put a facade good enough up right. to, to, to fool Jesus. Right. He saw right through what yeah. you were doing and yeah. who you were. That's right. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And so John the Baptist was getting people used to it. And so when, when John the Baptist came on the scene, Jesus and his disciples began to baptize just as John did. God didn't change that. God set that in place. He was the voice part in the wilderness. But the thing about prophecy is that in prophecy, God does not tell you the whole story. He holds something back. The crux of the matter, as it were. In this case, John was the voice in the wilderness. Isaiah speaks of him. The voice in the wilderness crying out, make right, make, make his path straight. Get your heart in order. Get yourself right. But what he does not say is that you're going to have to be baptized. He never mentions that. But this is the thing that is introduced. Baptism is introduced by John the Baptist 
for the purpose of getting your heart right. Repenting. Repent means to turn around. It's a military term that means to go in a 180, the opposite direction that you were going. And the way that you did that, the way that you showed that, in Matthew 3 and 5 and 6, the Bible lets us know that all of Jerusalem in Judea, they came out to be baptized of John the Baptist. Praise God. And what they did is they were being baptized. They confessed their sins in the water. This is how you repented back then. And when Jesus came on the scene, his disciples just kept baptizing and doing the same thing. In so much that the Bible lets us know in, in John chapter 4 that, that the Bible says that Jesus and his disciples, he had baptized more disciples than John the Baptist had while John the Baptist was still in ministry. But there's a power that God has given each of us in this day and age, in this dispensation as we're a part of this end time. God has given us the power to change our future. Praise God. I'm not talking about the entire world. You, you know, this is a thing many times uh, at, uh, at different things when they have uh, young people that are given their goals for their life. They say, I want to change the world. What a general blanket statement. Yeah. But really, God is focused on your world. Right. Yeah. Where you live. Yes. Where people are that need help. Where you're at. Yes. And that's what God wants you to change. Yes. Praise God. That small corner of the world yes. that you're in. Yes. Praise God. Yes. He set you in that place. Yes. God has anointed you and put you there in that place. Yes. To be able to affect somebody's life. Yes. To be able to change somebody's life. To be able to change somebody's status quo. Yes. To be able to change somebody's darkness to light. Yes. To be able to change somebody's yes. dilemma. Praise God. It's a deliverance. Praise God. God has set you in a place. Maybe it's a job. Praise God. Maybe it's a neighborhood. But God has put you in that place for you to change somebody's eternity. For you to change somebody's future. Amen. Praise God. But you have to recognize the power. It's the first thing we have to do. We have to recognize the power we have been given. Praise God. I have to recognize. If I don't know I have the power, then I'll never use it. I have to recognize that God has given me power. You have to be convinced of that. You see, if you're convinced, then you're not, you're not fumbling around. Jesus looked at his disciples, and he said to them, I'm giving you power. Praise God. To tread over antlers. To tread over serpents. Praise God. Praise God. He's given them power. Yes. And so they went. I sent them out by twos. Right. And they went and they came back rejoicing that the devils had power. That, that they had power over the devils. But Jesus had given them that power. Right. And they recognized Amen. because he said it. They believed him. Yes. Amen. And they went out in that power. And they began to cast out devils. Come on. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. They saw the power of God work through them. And this is what it is. You've got to recognize that God has given you power. You have to be convinced of that fact. Amen. Amen. Don't let the devil back you down. Don't let the devil be to tell you that you don't have that power or that it's just for another age or for somebody else or that you're not qualified. Praise God. Somewhere in my faith there's a conviction that convinces me. Then I will use the power I have. There's a confidence, praise God, in yes. God that He's given me the power. Yes. He's not, it's not just something I have to beg Him to do. Right. God has given us power. Amen. Amen. And that power is tied into my belief. That's right. Amen. What kind of power are we talking about? What are we talking about when we say He's given us power? What kind of power? Mark 16. 16 through 17 says this, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. In my name they shall cast out devils. Yes. They shall speak with new tongues. Yes. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. This is what he says. This is the power yes. that he's given those that believe. These yes. signs will follow yes. them that believe. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. The thing about believing God 
is there's actions that go along with that belief. Right. Yes. Everywhere in the Word of God, there's, a, there's actions that go along. If you're going to say you're in that class or that category of those that believe God, right. there's some actions that accompany that. Yes. Amen. Yes. You don't just live any old way. No. You don't do, just do any old thing. No. Right. And it's not a matter of just cognitively right at that moment agreeing with God. There's a body of work. There's a life that goes along with that. God's not just going to drink you somebody that's being a wino today. And then shakes himself and Come on. and God's going to just use him. No, no. There's, there's a commitment. There's a dedication level. Yes. You know, these same disciples that Jesus gave the power to, that were used of him, these same disciples came to him one day and they asked the question, why couldn't we do it, Jesus? What happened? Why? You know, it's like, you know, I went to snap and the spark came out. <laughs> Figuratively. Nothing happened, Jesus. What is what's going on? Man came to Jesus in Matthew 17, 15 through 21. This is after Jesus comes off the Mount of Transfiguration, right? Peter, James, and John witnessed this scene where Jesus is up there. And as he's up there, three... Um, or two other people appear, mm -hmm. Elijah and, uh, and Moses. Mm -hmm. And they say, let us make three tabernacles. They fall down on their faces. Let us make three tabernacles. And uh, the Bible says that when the smoke cleared, there was only Jesus standing there. Mm -hmm. So the disciples come off the mountain with Jesus. And then they're confronted with this man who says, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. So, water and fire, he can drown himself or kill himself in the fire and be burned up. He does dangerous things that normal people don't do. Our prohibitions, our fear of fire, right. our fear of water in that right. way right. will prohibit us from doing it. But he just does this right. and puts his life in jeopardy. And there's something more to it than just a regular human being. Mm -hmm. Because there's certain things we have this desire to live that God has built inside of all of us. Right. But when that is turned off, right. there's something going on. We all think it's a little strange. Somebody just took a leap off of buildings yeah. and stuff like that. We think there's something wrong with them. Right. Or ran out in front of cars. Yeah. But this kid, there was something, his father knew something wasn't right. right. And he went to the disciples. And he says in verse number 16, and I brought him to my disciples and they could not cure him. Right. The disciples could not cure him. Mm. Then Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse. Right. Now, these, are, these are some harsh words, right? <laughs> yeah. But this is what Jesus says. He says, yeah. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. He does not zero in on that man and his son. Mm -hmm. He says the culture and the society that you live in is faithless. Right. And when he says the word perverse, he means going the opposite way. So here's God's way. Perverse means your, your way has been tainted or perverted. You're going the opposite way in terms of your thinking as it's germane to this thing. Right. What God can do. Right. Yeah. Amen. Cursed is the man that trusteth in man. Yeah. It makes flesh his arm. But this is what's happening. My experience says this is all that's possible. Or that's not possible. Or this can't happen. And this is the way it's always been. You remember in the Old Testament, there was never a person, maybe with the exception of what Saul saw there, but there's never a person that we find that has an evil spirit mm -hmm. that's listed as such. Now, God had some very um, you know, sharp rules as to how Israel lived. And they weren't allowed to have the witches and those kind of folks that would bring that kind of thing into the camp right. or into the country. Yeah. But you don't see it in the Old Testament. But here in the New Testament, Jesus comes out and they're popping up all over the place. Devil's here, devil's there. He's casting them out. Right. They're speaking out. Right. 
But the disciples wanted to know, or this man wanted to know. Jesus, his, his response was, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. The Bible says, save yourselves from this untoward generation. The world will lie and impose its thinking on you. Jesus says that the end times was going to be filled with deception. And today, I'm letting you know, we live in a world that will lie to your face. Yes. And try to make you think that they're telling the truth. Right. Make you think that you're going crazy because you think something different. Yeah. We live in a society, it, it's, it is shocking. Yes. How deceptive it is. How perverse it is. Yes. We're, we live in that kind of society right. that is going the opposite direction of right. truth. Amen. Sometimes reality of truth, they'll lie about it. Right. And it doesn't come from a low place. The Bible says spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Satan knows it's more effective. He can get more people to believe things if he moves it up the chart right. where it comes up from. Right. The mouth that speaks it. The higher the mouth is that speaks it, the more people that will listen to it and not question it. Right. This is how we're wired because we're followers first. Right. And this is what's happening in our world. But even back then in their world, Jesus says, oh, perverse and faithless generation. Yes. Yes. And see, when you're moving in the circles of this world, when your mind's in the flow of this world, you're going to be just like this world in its thinking. Right. Praise God. But I'm going to break that yes. chain. Yes. I'm going to break yes. out of that kind of thinking. I'm going to break yes. away from that. I've got to break. If I'm going to see God move through me, yes. I've got to break out of that. I've got to get to another yes. place. I've got to believe something yes. different. Praise God. I've got to trust yes. somebody who's stronger, who's mightier, who's more powerful. Yes. Praise God. Who's already done it. Yes. I've got to trust him. I've got to believe him. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of them. First he says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? Then he, and he says, How long shall I suffer you? Shall I allow myself to suffer this? Because when you, when you don't believe him, it hurts right. Jesus. Yes. Yes. The, the Bible says in one place, he could not do many. You don't understand how powerful your belief is. Your belief is so powerful. Not just the mental acceptance. This is what everybody stops at. Agreement. No. But your belief to the, to the point that you engage yourself in an activity that's, that's consonant with that belief. That's, that's connected to that belief. If I believe it, I start acting a certain way. I start committing myself to it. You know, on I forget the name of the day. But there's a certain day in, in the Muslim uh, calendar where they are taking swords and they beat the top of their heads until they draw blood. Usually it's done in Iraq, whichever, if they're the Sunnis or the, the other brand of, of, of Islam. But they beat themselves until they draw blood. And it's men out there, all just men. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Women have more hair. So. Right. <laughs> but, but the guys are beating themselves with swords on the heads until they draw blood. And the more blood they draw, I guess the more spiritual they are. I don't know. But there is something you can't tell me that they don't believe. Everybody knows that they believe what they're talking about. They believe it. Even though it's not for a good purpose and it's not helping or benefiting them in a good way. But they believe it. Their actions. The way God's made us is that your belief. Praise God. What, what's coordinated with that? Is what's correlated to that is your actions. Praise God. Your actions. It shows what you believe. You can't separate them. James lets us know that. You cannot separate from your belief your actions. They are, they, they tell on you every single time. And Jesus was saying, be, it, the, the problem here is unbelief. And he wasn't pounding on any individual's head, even though an individual was talking to him. He didn't pound on that guy's head. He said, you're in this sea, this generation that is going the opposite, the flow, the current and flow of that generation is going opposite of God. It's perverse and it's faithless. We live in that kind of world. 
And if you do nothing, you're going down. If you get on a river that's running, what happens? You float down the river. Yeah, that's right. Right? You float down right with the current. Yeah. But I want to be like the salmon today. And I want to I want to go against the current. Amen. That salmon can go up hundreds of miles against the current. Mm -hmm. Sometimes jumping up streams, right. not just against current, but going up against nature. Now you're going against the, the gravitational pull, so you're jumping, going up. I want to be like that. I want to believe my God so much, but you can't do that unless you disconnect from the world. As long as you're tethered to this world, you, uh -huh. you go with the thinking of this world. Right. You may try to push back a little bit, but if, as long as you're tethered, you're going to keep on going. Mm -hmm. That's good. Fasting and prayer. Jesus talks to his disciples. Then they came to him. Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and a child was cured from that day forward. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. But that's just a blanket general answer. But then he goes into the heart of the matter. He says, For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be, it shall remove. And this is what Jesus says to them. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's what he says to them. He gives them this ridiculously, let's just be honest with it, impossible thing in their minds to do. A mountain that they've known has always been at that place. Removing and going to another place. And he wasn't just talking figuratively. He was talking literal. Mm. Praise God. That's why he comes up with the next statement and says, Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, has anybody achieved that grain of mustard seed kind of faith? It's something to achieve. Because he says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Praise God. God, I don't have it today, but I want it. I want it, God. I want it. And then Jesus ends that whole passage by saying this. How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So somewhere there's this linkage between prayer and fasting and mustard seed life faith. There's a connection, obviously. If you analyze what he's saying, it, you come to that conclusion that if I'm going to have mustard seed kind of faith and he says this kind, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take prayer and fasting. Praise God. The extreme importance of prayer and fasting is highlighted here as he implies that these launch one into mustard seed like faith to do the impossible. Praise God. Your faith will drive you to dedicate and commit so he can use you to do the impossible. Praise God. There are people in the Word of God that things were impossible. There's no way to explain a lady coming up alongside of Jesus and just touching his clothes without Jesus saying a word. Now, in the spirit, he knew she was coming, but without her ever announcing it. You can't explain that. No matter how hard we try, we can't explain that other than it's the supernatural power of God. That God wants to be in display in our lives. Yes. Yes. Praise God. First thing you have to do is recognize the power. Second thing you have to do is remember the promises. Praise God. I've got to remember His promises. John 14, 12 through 14 says, Verily I say, uh, verily, verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And then he goes one step further. And greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go unto my Father. Right, right. In other words, that spirit yes. is going to be inside of you. Yeah, yes. Praise God. My spirit is going to be inside of you. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Yeah. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, 
I will do it. But there's qualifiers all over the place. Sure. When, when you look at what he's saying, there's qualifiers. I'm in him. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the works of him. Greater works than these shall you do. Right. Praise God. Amen. Paul was in a place in Acts chapter 19 that, that God began to use him. Acts chapter 19, go to, I guess, verse number 11. But here's Paul doing the work of God. And you know what happened in Acts chapter 19, the very first of that scripture in Ephesus where Paul, um, he was there with some disciples of John the Baptist and he began to walk them through yeah. and watch God move mightily in their, in their lives as they were baptized in the name of Jesus and received the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says he stay, stayed there in one t Tyrannius' school uh, teaching for the space of about two years. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. God wrought, everybody say that, and God wrought, God wrought or worked special miracles by the hands of Paul. He's just doing the work of God. Paul is teaching. They're disputing. He gets kicked out of one school, goes to another one. But then God shows up. And what did the Bible say? These signs shall follow them that believe. So Paul's preaching the word. He's not leading with miracles. He's preaching the word. And then God backs him up. In verse number 12, we see the miracles, the special miracles God did. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or pieces of his clothes. Right. And the diseases, chronic diseases perhaps. Right. Departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Greater works than these shall you do. Praise God. Amen. But there has to be a seeking. Come on. Yeah. The Bible says, covet ye the best gift. There has to be a seeking for it. There has to be a coveting. Covet is a strong word because in the Old Testament it was banned. Thou shalt not covet. You know that's part of the Ten Commandments. Yes. But here in the New Testament, the word covet is used. That powerful desire mm -hmm. is used and pointed in the direction of God using me. Yeah. Me being a conduit through which God can work through his power in the lives of those that are around me. To change the future of somebody in my world. Amen. The power to change your future is in your hands. The power to change the future of those in your life is in your hands. God has given us that power. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to remember the promises. Because it's not just, just something that we're making up or just something of our own ideas, but this is in the Word of God. The Word of God states it. He plainly says it. And after you release, or re, you remember, you have to release the power in your life. Peter and John, the Bible says they were going up to prayer to the synagogue at the hour, to the temple at the hour of prayer. And it could have just been a normal, quiet trip to the synagogue at the hour of prayer. But when they saw a need, they decided to make it an extraordinary occasion. They could have just walked by and let it be just a normal prayer time. They did it every day at the hour of prayer. They could have just allowed it to be just like it always was. They were already pleasing God by going to prayer. But Peter seized upon an opportunity without being directly asked. He saw a need and matched it with a miracle. He saw a need and matched it with a miracle. God has some miracles today that need somebody with faith to match up. With a need. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. God needs somebody. Regardless of, of whether or not Peter stepped forward. To give this man a miracle. God was still capable. Amen. 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 That's right. Praise God. God. His power is never diminished. Right. Mm -hmm. But God's looking for somebody. That says I believe you enough to dedicate. Yes. I believe you enough to commit. I believe you enough to push back my plate. Yes. I believe you enough to pray. Yes. I believe you enough. To make myself available yes. for you yes. to use me. Yes. 
Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. I want to be used by yes, God. Lord. Yes. No matter the price I must pay. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood, she made her decision to launch forward. There's nobody asking her to do it. Her need was pushing her forward. Her, her need was the motivation. But still, it was it was unheard of. But the thing about it, if it didn't work, nobody would know. Because mm -hmm. all she was going to do is touch his clothes. Mm -hmm. Just touch his clothes. Right. Just, you know, the, 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 the lower part of his clothes, I wouldn't even get close to his body. As it's flowing away, I just touch it. That's all I need to do. And she said within herself, you see, God honors faith. God honors faith. But her faith was put into action. Her faith wasn't just a mental agreement with God. Yes, he's able to do it. Yes, he's able to do it. But she actually put herself in a place that she went towards him. Pushed through a crowd. So her faith became evident in her actions. Praise God. This is how it works. Your belief doesn't change God's truth or his ability. It can, however, determine whether or not you experience it. Whether or not you'll be the one that's used. I want to serve notice on the devil today that I intend to be used of God. Hey, Is there anybody in the place that says that? I intend to be used of God. I'm committed. I'm dedicated to the cause because I believe him. It ultimately starts with belief. Then I have to take some action. He's invested his treasure in these earthen vessels. Praise God. He's invested treasure in you. God thought enough of you to invest treasure in you. He put his spirit on the inside of you. God wants to change you, but God wants you to change your world. Amen. Praise God. The power to change your future is in your faith. Praise God. I'm not talking about the entire thing of your life. I'm saying about these little segments, yes. these things that you encounter. They change the man's life. Right. Here's a man sitting by the by the, the gate, beautiful. Right. Mm -hmm. And his life was changed because Peter fixed his eyes on him. The guy asked Peter for alms and Peter just fixed his eyes on him. Peter went past what the guy was asking about. Yes. Peter and the guy were not on the same wavelength. Right. The only thing the guy and Peter had together was a desire. Yeah. The guy was asking. That's it. Yeah. He didn't ask for a miracle. Yeah. He just asked. And Peter took the initiative mm -hmm. to give him. He says, silver and gold, what you're asking for, I don't have. But what I do have, yeah. I'm going to give to you. In the name of Jesus, Peter, action. Rise up and walk. Right. Come on. That's good. Yeah. And the Bible says his ankle bones receive strength wow. that they didn't have. Because, yeah. right. you know, the atrophy, you know, and, and if they never developed, we don't know what it looked like. But it didn't matter what it looked like. God strengthened those ankle bones and all of a sudden they did have power. Amen. Every muscle and sinew right. grew. Just Amen. like in Ezekiel when he says, speak, prophesy to dry bones. Right. He's already done it. Come and the on. sinew began to develop on those bones and muscle right. and all that stuff and all of a sudden it was covered. Mm -hmm. And God was able to reach down into that man's life and immediately his ankle bones. Mm -hmm. Just like the man that 38 years laid by the pool of water. Jesus came and says, Wilt thou be made whole? And the guy begins to say, Yes, I will. In so many words. Jesus says, That's all I need. Rise up. Amen. Take up your bed and walk. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We see the miracles of God in His Word. Yes. Yes. But let me tell you something. As long as there's life, there's hope. You may feel that I'm not there today, Pastor. But let me tell you something. God is... Put that inside of us. Yes. Yes. We're going to see miracles. Yes. We're going to see them right here yes. in this place. We're going to see God move. God can do it today. God can do it today. Right here today. But I also recognize that the disciples, in their metamorphosis and becoming like Jesus, they need to still get baptized, but he hadn't died yet. So there was, there was something different. 
but he'd given them power. But in their changing to become more like him, he had sent them through different situations. I, you know, I believe that Peter on the boat that night changed a lot of things in Peter's life. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because Peter was able to swim against the perverse and faithless generation that he's a part of. In so much, no pun intended, but he stepped out into the water. Yeah. That's right. And he's able to walk against the winds and the waves yes. to Jesus. But then, the perverse generation and faithless of that generation that he was a part of the thinking, he began to put two and two together. I am walking on water. Whoa, I shouldn't be walking on water. He began to sink in Jesus. He said, save me. And Jesus, of course, saved him. But the gumption to take a step outside of that boat changed Peter. I believe it. I believe it really changed him because nobody else did anything near that. And see, it wasn't perfect. His first time, it wasn't perfect. His stepping out on faith, doing something that nobody else had ever done. It wasn't perfect. But God honored that. Yes. God knew he would do it. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's why the circumstances got set up as they were. Jesus is in a mountain watching them toil in their rowing. In other words, going around in circles, mm -hmm. going nowhere. Jesus was watching us. Mm -hmm. But he knew the storm was coming. Right. And what that would do to everybody else. And the reaction that Peter would have to it. He says to Peter, when you're converted... Strengthen your brother. There's something about you. You're going against the grain on many of these occasions. He says, who do men say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. His flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. Amen. So on the day of Pentecost, the one that stood up and gave the explanation and gave the altar call and gave the answer as to what they were to do Amen. was this one that kept going like, he wasn't just loud and boisterous. That wasn't the thing that God looks for. Somebody that's super loud. No. Somebody that was going against the faithless winds and waves. And could go the opposite direction. Towards Jesus. He could black it all out. And somehow, I've got to get there. You've got to get there. I don't know what's your desire this morning. Let's stand this morning. My desire is to be used of God. And use of God is going to have a bunch of hand claps. There's not going to be a big audience for the use of God. There's going to be a lot of gasping and, a, and all of that. Because nobody believes it. Yes. But God's looking for somebody who's willing to be a David to stand against the, the current. People that God used. I'm telling you, when God uses people, many times there's just nobody else thinking that you can be used or that it can be done or that it's possible. People usually don't think that way. And I'm not saying you have to jump out and do the biggest thing that there is to do. But let God use you. Let God challenge you in your every day. It's all right to incrementally get to the place where you're stronger. It's a day-by-day -day walk. Let God challenge you in those little things. And let your faith be built up. This is how it has to happen. Praise God. I want to have my faith built up. Praise God. I need to have my faith built up. I need to be challenged. And I need to, when it comes time for me to take some time to fast and to pray. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's allow God to build us. This isn't just an optional thing all the time. Sometimes this is something that you're doing for God to build you. Yeah. That's right. Strengthen me. Strengthen my belief. Strengthen my trust. If you want to see God move, there has to be a hunger. Praise God. There has to be a desire to go outside of the status quo past the status quo. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? I've got to go past the status quo. Praise God. What I had yesterday isn't good enough. I've got to go for more. I need more of Jesus. You know, God expects more of you as you're walking for God, as you're living for Him. You might look at somebody and say, well, they can do that, they do that, they, they do this, and no, no, no. God's talking to you. God, you know, this is a, this is a, this isn't, the Old Testament was the crowd, the nation. But Jesus saved you. Jesus died for your sins. Amen. 
And God is calling for holiness. Yes. Praise God. Yes. On an individual level. Yes. It's not about looking at your neighbor and saying, well, they're doing this. Through. No, no. God's dealing with you. Yes. He's yes. talking to you. Yes. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your neighbor, whatever they do, that's between them and God. Yes. But God is dealing with you. You. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. There's some things that God speaks to your heart about. Don't push them aside. Hallelujah. When God says, I need you to do this, you haven't done it all your life. You haven't lived that way. You haven't. But God's saying, I want you to do this. Jesus. Listen to that spirit of God. You know it's optional? <laughs> deep calls to deep. Yeah. Yes, optional. And, and you can stay right where you're at. But if you're going to ever go higher in God, yeah, yeah, yeah. God's going to call you out. He's going to call you out. He's going to call you to another level. The priests, listen, in the Old Testament, the priests could not live like all the other people. Yeah. You ever hear the linen ephod? Yeah. That was not like this super rich garment that only, you know, super wealthy people wore. No, it was pretty a humble garment. <laughs> a linen ephod. Or a linen, a linen garment that the priests wore. It was not a fancy garment. No. It's, it's, it's not, as a matter of fact, it was only to be used in that service. Right. It had to be long, kind of went down so that, that their calves, that's not particular God was. Yes. God says, I don't want their calves showing when they're doing my work, when they're walking up the, uh, to the altar, or the, the temple steps. I don't want their calves showing. God was that particular. Just a little thing, but 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 God, He does this, it, 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 and as you're getting closer, as you're when when God singles you out to be used, yes. God will refine different areas of your life. Yes. But one of the things that God demands, and He did for His disciples, they were wondering why we couldn't. He gave them a simple answer: your unbelief. Not to smack them. But then also to challenge them. Yes. This kind goes out by prayer and fasting. And I dare say that as you pray and fast, God will tighten up some areas of yes. your life. God will speak to you. You're wanting this, and God will say, How about this? How about that? And God will be, begin to refine you. Praise God. That's how He does. You're desiring. He says, Yes, I want you to desire. Covet the best gift. And as you're reaching to covet it, God's also in your life. He says, add, Paul says, add to your faith virtue, you know, and, and um, um, long suffering, kindness, patience, all those things. You know how that gets added to you? When you're reaching for Him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You reach out desiring, and He yes. makes some deposits. And a lot of times at the altar, that's where some of these things are happening. I can't even explain what happens at the altar. Yes. Because as you're opening yourself up to God, God is pouring into you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These altars are open this morning. For us, just take a few moments. We're not going to be here very long. But just take a few moments and let's talk to God. I know you desire to be used of God. I know you desire for God to, to work through you. And God's saying, I, just, I need your belief, your trust in me like you never had before. Praise God. And I can use you. I can use you. I can work in your life. I can change some things in your life. I can change things around you. I can work and move miraculously in you. Praise God. Have your way, Lord. I pray today that you would touch. Speak, Lord God. In hearts and minds and lives today, God. Hallelujah. We desire you, God. We desire to be used of you, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. I trust you, Lord. I lean on you today, God. Have your way in my life, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm committing to you, God. I'm committing, Lord. God, I want you to use me. God, work in my life, God. Let your purpose be established in me. Let your purpose be established in me. Hallelujah. I surrender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God takes our surrendering. Hallelujah. God uses. God works. Hallelujah. As I'm committing. Hallelujah. God will send folks my way. Hallelujah. 
God's going to send people your way. Hallelujah. God's going to send people into your life because you're the mouth of God. You're the voice of God in their lives. You're the hands. You're the feet that God can use to reach them. Hallelujah. God, I'm available to you. God, I'm opening myself. God, I'm allowing you to work through me, God. Have your way. Refine me, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. As I take steps towards you, God. Have your way in my life, God. Use me, Lord, for your service. Use me for your purpose, God. I need you today. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.